Well, hello there. There's a lot of new stuff here at the homestead, which I haven't done episodes on yet, which I will do soon. That's not today's episode. Today, we're planting out a ton more stuff, peppers, tomatoes, and potatoes. I guess we're in the Solanaceous family today. Water tank, fence. We're gonna do a little work. Let's get to it. We're here at the gate. I actually did a double gate here on the fence. Remember, the fence video will be coming pretty soon, but I just wanna show you this really quickly. This was clutch because to get stuff in this backyard, it's two five feet fence. So I have a 10 foot fence, which is really great. The only problem is I don't have anything to secure this quite yet. So if the wind comes, you know, this will rip open. I don't want to put some stress on these hinges. So I went to the store and I got these like cane attachment things that you can put right here. So that's the first step. The problem is I'm just gonna have to bury it in dirt for now. I wanna do pavers here eventually, permeable pavers. But for now, I'd rather just not put stress on the joints on the fence, slam this in, so let's get this in the ground. Our next task is to take these hops, which have been sitting on the seating table for quite some time. We're gonna go get the materials for the trellis. I'm probably not gonna put the whole trellis build here on the Homestead channel, because I wanna make it a full main channel video with a lot of hops information, but I'll at least take you on over to Dixie Line. Welcome to the lumber yard, AKA the $2 million view right here. I'm sure there's probably like a million dollars of lumber right here with the prices right now. But I'm dilly dallying, Jacques is getting straight to business. We're looking at some treated four by fours for this hops trellis. Uh, it doesn't really matter if it's treated or not because this is just a support post. The Epic Mobile, we've actually finally tested out the new roof rack. I mean, look how useful that is. 16 foot four by four, so pretty useful. Both Jacques and I are dumb and it took us 10 minutes to figure out how to put a strap on, but whatever, we're off. Hops materials are here. I promise you will see exactly what this looks like on the main channel, but in a nutshell, we're almost making like a telephone pole, putting these things through. We're doing a little bit of threaded rod there, plumbing rod and then just trellising up the binds up this trellis and having them sort of lower and lean drop. It'll be really, really cool, but we gotta plant some peppers out there. This has been kind of a fun hack to loosen up and moisten the soil before you do some planting. This guy sent me Griftek, G-R-I-F-T-E-K. He sent out this little thing and we've sort of been using it as this weird hydrating manifold to get this nice and wet so we can actually get these peppers in the ground. And yes, I am watering all over the leaves of the tomatoes and peppers, but it's the middle of the day. It's not a huge, huge deal as most people would like you to believe. We're back in our tomato and pepper bed here. Jacques is here to help me with this. We have 28 peppers. By the way, if you haven't seen on the main channel recently, we put a full tour up of Jacques' garden. Yeah. A really cool look. Everyone is seeming to really enjoy that style of garden, so go check that out. But I've got five plants here from Burpee. They sent them out just as sort of like a little teaser. So these are hots and super hots. I'll kind of plant these in this corner here. Some of the ones over here, these are all the ones that we've started. You can tell, greenhouse grown, <laughs> not greenhouse grown, so a little bit different, probably fertilized a lot over here. Um, but Jacques will make his way down with these. I would say probably half of these are already in this bed, but I have them and I haven't planted, so you might as well plant them out. These ones, none of them are in. So yep. same process as last time, dig them in, little biotone in the, in the pot, in the hole, and off you go. Probably gonna offset, so not matching like perfectly on this line, but offsetting into the middle. So more of a triangular spacing pattern. So the, the hots and super hots guys, we've got Altenio. This is a hot pimento pepper, hot pepper piment fort. And then we've got Desperado. We have Demon Red, that's gonna be your super hot. We have Armageddon, that's probably, probably <laughs> super hot. Uh, two Armageddon plants. So I'll try to not plant them right next to each other, even though from a uh, like a cross-pollination perspective doesn't really matter. That's more about the seeds. But we'll go like that, like that. So this corner right here is spicy corner. And then we go. So I think I'll do tags the same on the right. Coming yeah, down. yeah. Yeah, we have duplicates of a lot of these because of the whole always be sowing, always. always be backing yourself up methodology that we've got. All right, we have 28 more in the ground, 15 over here, quick math, 43 peppers. I would say maybe 12-ish are repeats, so there's 30 different unique types of peppers in here. It's gonna be an insane, insane plot, and the tomatoes themselves are actually looking really good too, so I'll show you those right now. The tomatoes are all doing really well. You can see on this one right here, nice truss of, oops, I just knocked one off, cherry tomatoes that are forming. Something that I'm gonna be filming probably for the main channel is like a big tomato care guide, but just for now, something that you can start to do is take off the bottom leaves, or at least some of them, the ones that are hitting the ground for sure. So for example, this one down here, 
I can remove that. It's gonna start getting blocked by the sun anyways. It's touching the ground, starting to curl. It's the oldest leaf on the plant. And then that opens up the under canopy for planting things like basil. Jacques likes to do sweet alyssum or elizum. I don't know how to pronounce it, but it works really well to bring in hoverflies, which are the natural predator to hornworms. So use that space, free it up, do a little pruning. Next up on the planting day list is the tatties that you guys saw in the last video, the ones from Wood Prairie that uh, I had seen before, but Jacques, you turned me on to them. Oh yeah. Some of the stuff we've actually grown before. So we just grew Russian banana. Right. But you've yeah. grown pretty much all of these, right? So I've grown these. The Adirondack Blues. They're absolutely delicious. Yep. And then there's also the Prairie Blush, which they're well known for. It's like one of their own varieties. Yep. They accidentally created. That's absolutely delicious. And then they got that Huckleberry Gold. Yeah, the Huckleberry Gold. Let's see. Oh yeah, Huckleberry Gold. And then this one's really cool. It's Adirondack Blue. Yeah. And it's actually blue inside. And it Pure has blue. Skin. Yeah, Pure like blue. straight up. And at least from reports, it's not one of those things where the color is crazy and the taste is poor. It's actually quite tasty as well still, yeah. which is great. So the cool thing about potatoes, guys, is you've seen me grow them pretty much in every method possible. This is gonna be grow bag potatoes they're not very particular about soil. So this is basically some stuff that's from the nursery bag soil, some rejuvenated soil, some like even a little bit of blueberry mix, which is a little acidic. Potatoes will probably be just fine with that. Mm -hmm. So recycle, recycle, recycle. And what we're gonna do is put them in the grow bag. We'll put about four inches of soil in each bag, pop our potato in, one per bag, maybe two on these seven gallon bags, and then just fill it up. Not even really hill it, just fill it. Because they're early potatoes, they're gonna produce it's completely fine to do that. Yep. And then we just save ourselves even more hassle down yeah. the road. And one consideration that we thought about is that all these varieties are kind of early to mid. Yep. So even if it gets kind of hot here, we don't have to let them suffer through the whole summer. <laughs> right. <laughs> and it'll be within like 90 days. Yeah, 90 days, which puts us, if it's mid-May, it'll put us into what, August, I guess? Yep. Uh, which is pretty late for potato, but they're in grow bags, right? And so we can move them into part shade. We can move them to a semi-cool area and try to modulate the season a little bit because this is slightly late to plant the potatoes and I'm going hard on this. So let's go ahead and start mixing them up and planting. So Jacques and I are actually splitting these. They came from Maine. They weren't that cheap. I think it was probably $100 for one pound of six different potatoes plus shipping. That was not too cheap. So we're splitting yeah. them up. We're gonna try to make the most of them. One pound gives you about six potatoes. I'm not gonna put six in here. This one's prairie blush. They're already chitting, which is really nice. These are in really good condition. I mean, yeah. I bought a lot of seed potatoes from a lot of different places. These look amazing. These yeah. are really, really I'll good. say that they were growing really vigorously. Yeah. They've had zero health issues. Yeah. And they taste amazing. So well, like, that's a win for me. We have the Garden Hermit approval <laughs> right there. Jacques, the Garden Hermit approves. So I'm gonna go two in, one, two. Even two might be a little aggressive, but whatever. We'll see what happens. So you'll notice there's a lot of different grow bags we're using, getting them from a lot of different places, not really married to any one particular maker just yet. So I'll talk about a couple of the ones we have here. The colored ones are from Bootstrap Farmer. Those are seven gallon. We also have the taller Bootstrap Farmer. It is probably a 10 gallon bag. And then these ones here, I kind of am partial to, they're from Gardner Supply Company. They're reinforced. And so they're not as floppy and they actually hold a little bit more moisture than your average bag, which I think for the potatoes might be really nice, especially as we move into the summer, they also won't dry out as fast because of that protective outer sort of mesh. So link will be in the description for that one. And we're going in with some more tatties. Okay, these grow bags I've yet to try. Uh, the owner sent them out. Rain Science Grow Bag. Better drainage than old school grow bags or plastic pots. So we'll see if that's true. It's not so much a fabric like per se as it, like this is more of like a felt based fabric. This one feels more like real woven plastic, much thinner, and we'll see. Uh, we'll see how much it holds on to water. My hypothesis, because you can basically see through it, is that it's going to lose water at a higher rate than the average grow bag. So maybe that's gonna be a benefit, maybe it's not, we'll have to see. Okay, Potato Daddy is back with my second round of progeny this season. <laughs> really kind of a smorgasbord of bags. We'll have to figure out where these go. I don't think I want to put them up in the front yard because it's, it's going to be getting quite hot and this is not on irrigation. We're going to have to water it like crazy. Probably put it in a 
two thirds sun, one third shade sort of area of the garden, which might actually be somewhere around here. So you'll have to see, but we are now on to planting a giant cucumber. The moment has arrived for our giant bed. So if you remember, you'll know that there's a giant bean over there. There is a, it's not really a giant tomato, but it's a tomato that produces a lot of tomatoes per truss. So this is Kevin's Super Tomato, not named after me, named after Kevin Forty over at Giant Veg in the UK. Used to hold a bunch of Guinness World Records and he's trained a lot of people on growing giant vegetables, so we've become friends. I've got his giant bean, I've got his tomato, and now we have this cucumber. Didn't think it was gonna germinate. Really slow germinator. Nevertheless, it is here. We sowed this on the 27th of March. Pretty slow, pretty slow. But I suspect once it gets in the ground, it's gonna absolutely blow up. The genetics on all of Kevin's stuff have really impressed me and I'm going to do very simply just put it in the ground just top it in we're going to junk it in here this was a bed that we made a long time ago in the vlog it was just mushroom compost I think maybe some native compost from the nursery and that's it I'm not doing anything special here except for maybe the addition of biotone which at this point I don't really think that's a special thing that's just it's just the process here at the homestead we'll do a handful of that nice little deep root pot on this one Take a look at those roots. Nice healthy root structure on that, I have to say. Probably need to go a little deeper here. I'm using a Titan cage from Gardeners. I actually have the same cage behind me here. Really good if you're not going to prune at all. So this tomato has no pruning on the suckers, letting it go. It's being contained really well in the Titan cage. Same with this cucumber. I'm gonna do the exact same thing. We'll see how it goes. So in we go. Ooh. That was a bit of a mishap. You didn't see that. <laughs> in we go. I'm excited. The giant bed back here. With giant vegetables, it's about two things. Number one, it's about the genetics of the plant. You cannot get around that fact. You have to have good genetics. And then, number two, it's about how you care for it, how you prune, feed, and train it. And then number three, it's, it's about actually your climate. So you want a really long growing season. That's why Alaska grow some of the most giant vegetables in the world and they're dominating people in world records. Although, Kevin did it over in the UK and they have a shorter growing season than us here, so I'm pretty optimistic that in the next couple years I'll get a Guinness World Record on a giant vegetable here in San Diego, California. So our cucumbers in, let's move on. Out here in the front yard, the peas have overstayed their welcome. I don't think I need to tell you how you can tell. They are almost completely dried up. So I will save these. But for now, I'm just gonna to toss them in the wheelbarrow and we'll deal with maybe saving some seeds or what have you a little bit later. But we need to get something in this uh, east side of the subpod system because you really wanna take advantage of the space vertically in the subpod because you're burying maybe, I would say 40% of the raised bed space is the subpod itself. So you kinda of have to go vertical to make the most use out of it. Jock's got the cukes off the ground. We're waiting on an A-frame trellis but in the interim, you don't want them just sitting on the ground. They're not gonna do very well. More risk of disease, more risk of just like poor performance. So, look at that. <laughs> I wonder how this tastes. Let's find out. Not good. It's like pure chalk. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, let's go leave the experiment for you. <laughs> mm. We're gonna let him go. All right. Now we have to change out the radish bed. All right, up here, this massive mess of stems and leaves. This is all the rat's tail radish, so I'll pull one up just to kind of show you. Let's pull this one up here. Actually, this is a normal radish, excuse me. This is a rat's tail right here. Massive, massive root, look at that. Wow, look at that. Okay, that's crazy, look. We actually pulled up an entire failed row of carrots that we were growing. This bed was one of, <laughs> it's so funny. This bed was one of the beds that had the problem with the low calcium, low nitrogen phosphorus lockout. Tried to solve it, didn't quite get all the way there. We're gonna reflip it. We've had a lot of success, as you saw in last vlog with the sunflower bed doing that. We've done really well with the squash bed over here. So same process. We're going to shore up the soil line in the birdies bed. We're gonna clear all this stuff out. The thing you grow rat's tail for is these, are these pods which I have to say, both Jock and I really don't like them at all. Uh, so that was a failed taste test, but certainly an interesting plant to grow. So right now it's really just getting brutal, ripping all this stuff out. This will go in the compost, of course. Look at that. Bolted radish, use this as like a 
<laughs> oh, yeah, just deck someone with this thing. Anyways, we're gonna clear this out. Not putting anything in it just yet, but you'll get a sense of how we clear it out in just a moment here. So we have some radish and uh, I don't know. I mean, they're probably not gonna taste that great. They've been sitting in here for a while. Certainly more than the 35 days-ish or so that they were supposed to. Maybe I'll do a taste test later on a different video, but for now I will save them. I'm not gonna waste them. I'll maybe slice them thin and pickle them, but let's get back to flipping this bed. Before we change out that bed, take a look at this new planting here. Blue jade corn and a red curry squash. Sort of sort of a two sisters, I guess, type of planting. Maybe I'll put some beans around the outside. And the tank got an upgrade. This is a 250 gallon tank now. So you got your first flush filter right there. Water comes in after this fills up, it'll start routing this way. So clean water goes in, you access it with the hose down there. And if it ever overflows, it'll go straight into the artichoke patch. In the spirit of repurposing, I've got some soil in this stand up cedar bed. That's perfectly fine. Just stayed a little overly moist in this particular bed. And so there's nothing wrong with it. So we're going to top it off. I think something I see a lot of people do wrong on a raised bed is not filling it really close to the top. So you can see there's maybe three and a half, maybe four inches worth of just gap here. Not ideal. You get, you get natural sinking. So don't stress out if, if you're looking at your bed and it looks like this. So you get a natural sink, but you do have to remember to amend, especially if you fill a tall raised bed with like the log method, like I've talked about before. At that point, it really will start to sink down, especially after your first planting. And so you want to come in and top it off with some fresh or at least good mix whether that's homemade or, or bagged. And we're gonna add a couple of different amendments into here as well. So Josh just brought over the Biotone from Espoma. We have Espoma with Gypsum. We found that to be good in this particular use case. And also a little bit of this Earth Dust product, which is sort of like an azomite type of thing. It actually contains azomite within it along with other stuff. So it's sort of like an azomite on steroids, but uh, nevertheless, we've had some good success with it. Ooh, got some of these guys. Little onion in there? Worse, oh. Worse. Okay. What are you gonna do with them? We'll throw them to the let them. Let them. Yeah. The bird let them find a different life. Not a life in this garden. I mean, look how much soil we're adding to this, and it kind of looked like a full bed already. I mean, you could be forgiven for thinking that bed was fine, but this is a lot more soil. Earth Dust product. I'll actually read off what's on the back because it's kind of interesting. Alfalfa meal, azomite, steam bone meal, distiller's grains, humic acid, insect frass, kelp meal, molasses, potassium sulfate, soybean meal, wheat middlings, and worm casting. So it's got a lot of stuff. It's from my friend Dan at the Green Sunshine Company. He actually makes LED grow lights, um, but this is another thing that he sent me out just to try. We've been having some success with it. Seems like a very uh, microbially like active, good for the bacteria. Yeah. All right, gypsum, we're gonna go in on the Suspoma with yeah, about maybe a pound. A light sprinkle somewhere all over. About, yeah, about a pound, I would say. So the idea with this is we're trying to get some of the calcium to release, since yep. we know we have a calcium issue. Yep, exactly. In theory, you could overdo this by putting the whole thing in or something like that, but you could be liberal with biotone. It really doesn't do anything to over apply it. Okay, cool. Mixing time. A lot of you might be wondering why are we digging this bed, it's because there was a problem with the bed. If there wasn't a problem, why would you dig it? You would just let it be, you'd let the soil life continue to propagate itself and everything would be perfect. Well, we're trying to troubleshoot that problem after we feel that we've solved it, then of course we'll just top dress and, and let it be from then on out. Oftentimes when you fill a raised bed up from start, you kind of have to play around with it just a little bit before it gets to that nice stasis and you can just keep on growing in it. I'd say we're pretty well mixed, yeah? Yeah, let's level it up. Let's level it. And even this will settle once we water it in, and that gives us enough space to add about an inch of that straw mulch that we love. By the way, guys, garden straw is available finally on the store, so you can grab it for an early June shipment. It's 80 bucks for a four pack, which is for sure the best deal because the shipping is free on that. And it's two cubic feet, which will probably, I would say it's about 80 square feet, two to three inches deep. So it's pretty good value. About a dollar per square foot of application on some of the best straw you'll find. Over here in the front bed, so there's these two, then there's this one. The beans are doing okay. Still some of the same problems as the other beds. A little bit light, but some of the new growth is coming in greener from that fertigation you guys saw in the last episode. However, the soybean, the edamame, absolutely atrocious garbage performance. I mean, look at that. That's just pathetic. And so what we're going to do 
Jacques, actually, why don't you explain what you did at your house? So I actually planted some edamame around the same time, and they look like this. Yeah. And so I just went ahead and re new ones, and the new growth looks great. So I think what happened is, sometimes in San Diego, it's hard to remember that the soil can be a little chilly. Um, so I think we just went a little too early. Yeah. So, so we should be good now. We're just literally going to re-sow it, try, try again method, <laughs> and see what happens. Sprinkling a biotone in first. There you go. Interesting how different soybean seeds look to your typical bean. So in we go like that. And eh, it's probably a little tight, maybe like that, right? Sure. Yeah, and we could probably get one on the edge or two or something. You'll notice the oil is in here too, so we'll fill that up while we're at it. Nice passive watering system. Hasn't been filled up in a while. Wow, it really hasn't been filled up in a while. <laughs> Dang. A few moments later. Come on now. One eternity later. There it is. Boom. Pop it on, and we're good. A lot of planting, a lot of prep today, as promised, but you gotta end the day with the fruits of your labor. So we have these really interesting cucumbers. I forgot the name. Do you remember it, Jock? Uh, these are Boothby's, I think. Boothby's Blonde? Yeah, that's Boothby's right. Blonde? That's yeah. right. So look at it. It's just, it just looks unripe, but it is ripe, nevertheless. So let's find out how it tastes real quick. Ooh, interesting. Oh, wow. Interesting. Look at the... I mean, let's cut right through the middle and see if there's something different going on. There you go. Oh, that sounded that's, crunchy. That's what you need. Here, let's let's cut a big chunk for you and myself. Do as I say. Don't, don't cut on your own leg like this. All right. Cheers, bro. Cheers. <laughs> Cucumber cheers. <laughs> All right. That's nice. Yeah. Yeah. Cucumber? I mean, it's a cucumber. <laughs> <laughs> what are you supposed to say? It's not It's not a stellar cucumber, but it is nevertheless good. It's like a little sweet. Mm -hmm. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Long episode. If you like this more freeform style, definitely let us know in the comments. And um, yeah, enjoy. Go look in the garden. Keep on growing.